trajectory probability. So in this case, uh, what, is the, what is the trajectory probability? So we know when it comes to a stochastic process, uh, you have a number of states. And then uh, for an example, uh, if you look at this uh, diagram, this transition diagram, you can see you have seven states here. So in this case, if we uh, want to find out, now let's say I'm going to start uh, from state 1, then I'm going to state 5, then state 7, then state 6. Likewise, I can start from any state and I can reach the other status as I like. So if I want to check the probability of uh, reaching state 1, 5, 6, 7 in order, that is known as the trajectory probability. So a trajectory means a sequence of the uh, states that you have reached. For an example, if you take... Uh, x0 as uh, 3 over 4, 0, 1 over 4 and 0, you are, uh, we can calculate the probability of this trajectory 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4. What does this mean? x0 means when time is equal to 0, read the probability of reaching state 1 is 3 over 4. Probability of sta uh, reaching state uh, 2 is 0. Probability of reaching state 3 is 1 over 4 and the, all the other states, probability of reaching all the other states they, that is equal to 0. So in this case we can just uh, find out if we know at the if we know the probabilities of uh, uh, reaching each state at the initial stage. Now we have to find out the probability of this trajectory that is first we have reached state 1 then from 1 we are going to state 2 from 2 to 3 3 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 so we have to find it out so we can see if we look at this uh, trajectory the first state that we have reached is state 1 so here they have given at the initial stage the probability of reaching state 1 is 3 over 4 so the probability here we can write as uh, the probability of this trajectory that is equal to at the initial stage that is when x equal to 0 we are st uh, reaching state 1 we have to consider this probability and then from 1 state 1 2 we are going reaching state 2 so that is p 1 2 and then we have p 2 3 then p 3 2 then p 2 3 and then Finally, from state 3 to we are going state 4. So, this probability, probability x0 equal to 1 that is given as 3 over 4. P1, 2, P2, 3, P3, 2 those probabilities we can find from the uh, transition diagram. So, if you look at P1, 2 uh, that is reaching state 2 from state 1. So, 1 to 2 probability is 3 over 5. Then 2 to 3 probabilities 1 3 to 2 probabilities 2 over 3 again 2 to 3 1 then 3 to 4 1 over 3 so these probabilities are given so we can simply substitute the probabilities and find the uh, probability of this trajectory. So, in order to find the probability of a given trajectory, you need to know what is the probability of reaching each state at the initial stage, right? Or at least the uh, probability of reaching the uh, first state of the given trajectory at the initial stage. Uh, stage you need to know in order to find the probability of a given trajectory. So uh, actually we can nicely prove this using the Markov property. Uh, so let's say uh, x naught is having uh, a phi t distribution that is the probabilities when time equal to zero we know the probabilities of reaching all these states. So let's say uh, we want to find the probability of this trajectory S0, S1, S2 up to ST. That is the probability when x is equal to 0, 
that is uh, equal to s naught x1 is equal to s1 likewise when time equal to t we have to be in state st so this is equal to probability when time equal to t we are xt is equal to st given that when time equal to t minus 1 xt minus 1 is equal to st minus 1 then xt minus 2 equal to st minus 2 likewise when x naught is equal to s naught so this we can we have to multiply this by the probability uh, given that we are talking about the last state so before that we have to be in each of these states to come to the to reach the last state when time equal to t so that is probability xt minus 1 equal to st minus 1 xt minus 2 equal to st minus 2 likewise x naught equal to s naught so if you look at this first we know in the, using the marco uh, property the future is only depending on the present state right so that is xt is only depending on xt minus 1 not we don't have to consider the other events right so this is only depending on this term so for the first term we can replace as probability xt equal to st given that xt minus 1 equal to st minus 1 so that is actually given that we are in the state s t minus 1 we are going to state st so if you use the notation that is p st minus 1 comma st that is the probability notation and here we can replace now we have this term so now we can talk about uh, reaching um, the state st minus 1 when time equal to t minus 1 so that is probability xt minus 1 equal to st minus 1 given that x t minus 2 equal to st minus 2 likewise up to x naught equal to s naught and you have to multiply this if you are at uh, t minus 1 time you have to consider the other problem other uh, time periods starting from x naught to xt minus 2 so in this case if you consider about this term here again we are talking about xt minus 1 equal to st minus 1 so this is depending only on this term the previous term the previous state so that is xt minus uh, xt minus 1 equal to st minus 1 given that xt minus 2 equal to st minus 2 so all the other terms we can cancel out so if you look at that term that is the probability we are in state st minus 2 and we are going to reach state st minus 1 so that is probability st minus 2 comma st minus 1 so then we'll be left with this term so likewise we can uh, take this term again we can rewrite using the same method and then we can prove uh, the trajectory probability like this so it's a very easy proof so that is also possible uh, proof that I can give for your examination so you don't have to buy heart all the proofs but uh, some proofs like this where you can logically apply uh, logical thinking and you can just do it by yourself without uh, uh, giving a much effort though those things are possible questions in the exam so let's uh, do a work example so let, uh, this is a flea example you can see this flea is uh, reaching three states and the transition diagram is given here with the probabilities so the first question is we have to find the transition matrix so we know in stochastic processors the transition matrix is denoted by p so here we have three states three, uh, state one state two and state three so for the rows and the columns you have to get three states so this the transition matrix is a three into three matrix so here we know in the transition matrix our rows are the uh, first steps and then 
here if you take the first one uh, that is uh, we are in first state going from state 1 to state 1 the probability you have to check so going from state 1 to state 1 you can see the probability is 0 0.6 that's why 0 0.6 is here then going from state 1 to state 2 state 1 to state 2 the probabilities you can see 0.2 that's why 0.2 is here then here we have uh, reaching state 3 from state 1. So, going from 1 to 3 probability is 0.2. So, we have probability as 0.2 here. And then we start with state 2 in the second row. So, from when it comes to state 2, reaching state 2 from state 1. 2 to 1 probability is 0.4. So, you have 0.4 reaching state 2 from state 2 we can't come back to the same state so that probability is 0 then 2 to 3 2 to 3 probability is 0 0.6 that we can write here then the last state states 3 from state 3 we can't reach state 1 and we can't reach state 2 so uh, sorry we can't reach state 1 so that probability is 0 and state 2 uh, if you look at state 2 that is 0 0.8 here and it's here and reaching the same same state we have 0 0.2 as the probability so it's 0 0.2 here so by looking at the tra transition diagram we can complete the transition matrix now our second question that is we need to find uh, probability that x2 equal to 3 given that x0 is equal to 1 that is when time equal to 0, this flea is in state 1. And when time equal to 2, the flea is in state 3. So that is from two steps, the flea has reached state 3 by starting from state 1. So that is they are talking about two-step probability. So in last week, I explained when we are talking about two-step probabilities, we have to consider the uh, squared values of the transition matrix. So in that case, this probability we can reach from the squared value, the square, if you take the uh, squared uh, term of the transition matrix, so that is P squared, and they are talking about starting from 1, reaching state 3. So that is 1, 3. So if you want to take the value of the first row and the third column value of P squared, matrix then that is coming from what you have to do you have to take the first column and the third row of the original transition matrix and then you can multiply those two and find the value so you don't have to find p squared the whole matrix you can just uh, find only this value by taking the first row and then taking the third column Right, then take in the third column uh, and then you can just multiply these values and find the probability. In the exam also, no need to find p squared. If you ask, if I'm asking about only one probability, you can do the calculation like this. And then in part C, it says, suppose that uh, uh, that purpose flea is equally likely to start on any vertex at time 0. Find the probability distribution of x1. So, when time equal to 0, this flea can start from any state. So, since we have st three states, if you have the equal chance to start from any given state, that is the probability of starting from each uh, state is equal to 1 over 3. That is x0 is with x note we can write as 1 over 3 comma 1 over 3 1 over 3 because you have the same probability when time equal to 0. So we need to find x1. So last week we proved that x1 the distribution of x1 is the, transpo uh, the transpose of phi and we have to multiply that by the transition matrix. So we know this is the distribution of x note and here we can take it and we can take the transition matrix here and we can multiply those two and we can find out 
the distribution of x1. So when you just do the multiplication, you will see you get the same value. That is 1 over 3, 1 over 3, 1 over 3. That is the distribution of x1 is same as the distribution of x0. That is when time equal to 1 also, there is an equal chance for reaching any of the given state. And then, suppose that flea begins at vertex 1 at time 0, find the distribution of x2. So, in this case, what happens? Now, when time equal to 0, there is no equal chance to reach each each of the given states because they have uh, particularly mentioned that this flea has begun uh, from state 1 uh, when time equal to 0. So that is when you take x node when time equal to 0 this uh, flea has reached only state 1. So reaching state 1 probability is 1 and he has not reached the other state. So the other probabilities should be 0. So that is x node. And then again, we are talking about x2. So, if you are talking about x2, uh, then we have to take the distribution of x0 and the transpose, that is phi transport, and then we have to multiply that by p squared. Last week, we discussed that. So, p is the transition matrix. Then we can take the p squared here, and here the x0 is 100. 0, 0. So, in this case, actually, we can see when you just multiply 1, 0, 0 from this uh, matrix, you get the same. Here, it's uh, uh, in this case, when you multiply these two, you are left with only the first row values because you can see here the other two terms are equal to 0. So, then you, you can just take the first row and multiply with the matrix and find the uh, distribution of x2. So, you will get these answers. You have to do your calculations uh, at home and check. So, there, this is when time equal to 2, uh, probability of reaching state 1 is 0. 0.44. Probability of reaching state 2 is 0. 0.28. Probability of stating, well, probability of reaching state 3 is uh, here 0. 0.28. So, there's a mistake. This should be. Uh, 3 right p x3 equal to 3 that is again 0 0.38 to 8 so you can simply find the probabilities like th that and then uh, let's say the flea is equally likely to start on any vertex at time 0 and we have to find the probability of obtaining the trajectory so, if there is an equal chance when time equals 0 for this flea to start, we know reaching the probability of reaching each state is 1 over 3 since we have 3 states. So, here the flea has started from state 3. So, that probability, probability x0 equal to 3, that is 1 over 3. Then this uh, flea has gone from 3 to 2, 2 to 1, 1 to 1, 1 to 3. So, these probabilities we can find from the transition diagram or from the transition matrix. So, if you just look at the transition diagram, the probability of going 3 to 2, 3 to 2 is 0.8. So, we have to just substitute the value there. Right, we can just substitute the value there. So, then we can just check what is the probability of going from 2 to 1, that is 0. 0.4. Then 1 to 1, 0. 0.6. Then 1 to 3, 0. 0.2. So, by multiplying these values, we can find the probability of the trajectory. So, I hope the trajectory part is clear with you all. So, the next thing that we are going to discuss about the class structures. Now, when you uh, look at a transition diagram, uh, sometimes now with the example that we just discussed, you can see there are some states that we can, uh, if, if I just uh, show you the previous example, if you look at the same transition diagram here, look at this one. Now, if you take state 1, 
uh, from state 1 I can if I use this path I can directly go to state 2 and also from state 2 I can come back to state 1 and also if I check uh, state 1 and 3 from 1 to I can go directly to 3 and if I want to come back to 1 I from 3 to 1 I can't directly come but I can go from 3 to 2 and then 2 to I can come back to 1 and if I take 2 and 3 I can directly go to 2 and also directly come back to 3. So we can see when you look at all these three states from any given state I can reach any given state. From 1 I can go to 2 and from 1 I can go to 3 and from 3 I can go to 1, from 3 I can go to 2, from 2 I can go to 1, from 2 I can go to 3. So from any state I can go to any given state. So when it comes to it, uh, when, when it comes to a class structure of the stochastic processors, so there are something called like communicating classes. If two classes are communicating classes, that is, um, if you have two states, if these two states are communicating states, what should happen is, let's say we have two states called state I and state J. From state I, you should be able to reach state J. And from state J also, you should be able to reach state I by any number of steps. It it can be uh, by a single step or it can be two, uh, with the use of two steps, three steps. The number of steps doesn't matter. If you can reach state I from J and state J from I, we call these two states are communicating states. Right. So if you have two uh, states which are communicating states, then we can write it as state i communicating with state j why by using a double arrow like this this is the notation for communicating state right so if you look at the notation for a markov chain with the state space s and the transition matrix capital p we consider two states i and j these two states are in the sample that is in the sample space that is in the state space then we can say state I communicates with state J if there exists some T such that P T I J greater than 0 and there exists some U such that P U J I greater than 0. That is T means by uh, T can be any number. T can be 1, 2, 3, any number. That is the probability of reaching state J given that you are in state i by any number of steps this probability should be greater than zero that is there exists some probability it is possible to reach state j from state i and also in the other way around the probability of reaching state i given that you are in state j this probability by any given number of steps you can be any number this probability also greater than zero so there exists a probability it is possible to reach. So if so, we, can, we call these two states are communicating states. So uh, in this case, uh, we have with the communicating uh, uh, with the communicating states, we have the definition for communicating classes. So what is a communicating class? If this uh, state I and J are in the same communicating class, that is we know we can reach state I from J, J from I, that is uh, each state is accessible from the other. So that is every state is a member of exactly one communicating class. So if you want to find the communicating classes, if it is a communicating class, all the possible, all the states which are in that communicating class should be able to access each other. 
if so we call them as a communicating class now if you look at this example if you look at this transition diagram you can see you have five states state one two three four five now if you look at state one from state one i can go to state three and from state three i can go to state one directly so that is one and three are communicating classes no problem and let's check one and two from two we can directly come back to one so if i want to go to one uh, two from uh, one i have to go to three and two it's also possible that is one and two are also communicating classes communicating states and if you check 3 and 2, from 3, of course, you can reach 2 directly. And from 2, you can go to 1 and reach 3. That is, they are also communicating states. But if you look at 2 and 4, from 2 to 4, you can go. But 4 to 5, we can't come. See, if you reach 4 here, we can go to 5 and come back to 4. But we can't come back. To these states if we go to state 4 that is you can clearly see when you take state 1 2 and 3 these three are accessible with each other so we call one state 1 2 and 3 they belong to one communicating class and if you look at 4 and 5 from 4 you can reach 5 from 5 you can reach 4 there are two communicating states but the others you can't access other states if you are in one of these two states four and five so we call four and five is another communicating class so in this transition diagram you have two communicating classes that is one two three and four five so by looking at the transition diagram we have to check whether all the states are communicating with each other if all the states are communicating each other, the whole transition diagram is belonging to one communicating class. If not, as you, uh, it can be seen in this example, here state 1, 2, 3 are communicating with each other, 4 and 5 are communicating with each other. So, in that case, we have two different communicating classes. So, uh, there is now... Uh, when it comes to this class structure of the stochastic processes, so one thing you have to learn, uh, the first thing is what are the communicating states? That is, if the two states are accessible for each other, we call them as communicating states. Then, what are what are the communicating classes? So it is actually communicating class is a collection of communicating states. In a communicating class, all the states sh st states should be accessible with each other. So we call them as communicating classes. And then uh, we have another one called a closed class. A closed class means um, if a communicating class of states. Uh, we, when you have a communicating class is a classes of a class of states uh, if it is not possible to leave that class we call that class as a closed class now for an example if you look at this transition diagram now when you take this one two three communicating class from this you can go to this class 4 and 5 communicating class but once you come to 4 and 5 communicating class you have no other way to go back so that is 4 and 5 known as a closed class so if you can't leave that class again we call it as a closed class that is if you have a communicating class as c and if Let's say uh, there is a state called I in this uh, communicating class C and uh, there is another state J in another communicating class which does not belong to C. So if P I J that is reaching J which is in another class from I is equal to 0 we call this as a closed class right. So, in this example that we discussed, we can clearly see when you take the 1, 2, 3 class, 
this communicating class we can leave that one go to other classes so one two three is not a closed class but when you take four and five we can't go back and reach the other classes so it is a closed class so you should know what is a closed class and what is not a closed class and also when when it comes to these uh, stochastic processes sometimes when you reach a particular state you cannot go back to other uh, states so if that is the case we call those kind of states as absorbing states so especially if you have a state like this and all the arrows are coming back to the same state that is you cannot leave that state again so we call it as a absorbing uh, state so uh, another thing we have to learn is now when you are given with the transition diagram if you can see all the classes are communicating with each other that is we have only one uh, communicating class in the transition diagram so if that is your case if all the states are um, accessible with each other if all the states are communicating states in your transition diagram that you can that you can't further uh, divide your uh, transition diagram into further classes we call your transition diagram as a irreducible transition diagram so that is uh, it's a irreducible chain where you cannot divide your transition diagram into uh, some more uh, classes you have only one communicating class then we call it as a irreducible uh, irreducible transition diagram or irreducible chain so that is about the class structure so you should know uh, when it comes to stochastic process when you are given with the transition diagram to find you should be able to find the communicating classes you should be able to find the communicating states you should be able to find what are the closed classes what are the closed uh, absorbing states and also you should be able to find out whether the given transition diagram is a irreducible chain or not if you can find some uh, two or three classes uh, that is more than one class inside your transition diagram but more than one communicating class then it is not a irreducible chain that is a reducible chain right so that is about uh, the class structure and uh, also i'm going to discuss about another uh, topic which is about hitting probabilities so in this case uh, the hitting probabilities uh, that is uh, we have uh, used the first step analysis in order to solve questions in the previous chapter so hitting probabilities also now uh, for an example if you have a transition diagram with several number of states and um, if you have a set of uh, states uh, which have been specified earlier and if you want to find out the probability of uh, reaching those set of states then we can talk about this hitting probability so here it's the hitting probabilities when we are talking about the hitting probability you should be able to you should have a, a markov chain or a transition diagram and then we need to have set of states to talk about the hitting probability so this uh, subset of uh, states that uh, can be only one state or that can be two states and also these states th uh, should not belong to the same communicating class they can be any number of states and any state from your transition diagram so in this case uh, now let's say we have a uh, subset called a and for this subset we have only state 4 right so if you look at our previous example we can talk about a subset a and for that we can include one and four or one two likewise we can talk about anything but let's say we are talking about a subset a which has only one state four 
So in this case, we need to find out the hitting probability that is reaching this subset for, uh, starting from any other given state. We need to find out. So uh, as formal notation, we write it as HIA. That is, I can be any state starting from state I. Uh, the probability of reaching st uh, st uh, the subset A is denoted by HIA, which is known as the hitting probability. So, that is uh, the time that we don't know by using any number of steps, right? By So, X uh, T. Uh, when t is greater than or equal to 0 and so given that starting uh, from the state i when time equal to t xt should be um, in when time equal to t we should be in the subset a so that is known as hia the heating probability so let's talk about that using this example so you can see this transition diagram now, if you look at this transition diagram, if you look at this uh, subset, we have taken A as 1, 3. So, 1 and 3. So, now in this case, we need to find out the hitting probabilities for this set A. Right? Now, if you look at here, we have 5 states. So, from each and every state, we have to talk about the hitting probability. So, if you take state 1... State 1 is an element of the given subset because the given subset is 1 and 3 and state 1 is inside the given subset. So that is if we are talking about the hitting probability or in other words now we are already in state 1 we are going to talk about reaching state 1 or 3. So that is at the beginning you are already inside that subset. So, that is the probability of reaching that. You don't have to wait any time. You have already reached that. So, the probability is 1. Same with state 3, right? Because now we are already in state 3. It's the element of the given subset. So, you have already reached one of the members of the given subset. So, that is the hitting probability is equal to 1. So, in other words, if you write h1a that's starting from 1 here h1a and h3a that should be equal to 1 because you are already in that subset 1 and 3 are members of the given subset let's look at 4 and 5 if you are in state 4 and 5 we know we can't reach any other state by looking at the, this uh, transition diagram it's clear that we can't reach any other state so, that is, it's not possible to reach state 1 or 3. So, that is, reaching state 1 and 3, given that we are in state 4 or 5, that probability is impossible. That should be equal to 0. So, in other words, we can write H4A and H5A, they are equal to 0. And when it comes to state 2, from 2 we can reach this state 1 easily with the probability 0.3. So, that we can write as H2A is equal to 0.3. So, by looking at the transition diagram, we can easily find out H1A equal to 1, H2A equal to 0.3, H3A 1, H4A and H5A, they are equal to 0. So, when you write this hitting probabilities as a vector, we call this as the vector of hitting probabilities. So, by observing your transition diagram, you can easily write down these uh, probabilities. So, let's say when... Uh, when if you have... If the, the subset that you are talking about, the subset A that we are talking about, if this is an absorbing class... Then we can, that is when you come, when you reach this state 103, if you can't go out. For an example, if you define A as 4 and 5, when you reach 4 and 5, you can't go back to other states. So, this is a actually absorbing class. 
So in that case, the heating probabilities are known as absorption probabilities because after you reach 4 and 5, you can't go back to other states. So we call them as absorption probabilities. And in this case, so if you, if we have, uh, if we have a, a well-defined subset with the given state space, and then we can talk about the heating probability for each and every state in the state space. So that is if you have capital N number of states, and if A is our given subset, the heating probability HJ, we can write as H1A, H2A up to HNA. That is the probability of heating subset A starting from state 1 and heating subset A starting from state 2. Likewise, we can talk about these heating probabilities. So, to find out this uh, heating probabilities, the easiest way is uh, to apply the first step analysis. Now, for an example, if you look at this diagram, in this diagram, if you want to uh, find the vector of heating probabilities for state 4, right? That is starting from each and every state, we need to find out the probability of reaching state 4. That is HI4 we have to find. So, we can uh, easily use the first step analysis in order to find that. So, before using the first step analysis, we can see if you are already in state 4, that is the, you have already reached the given subset, that is uh, the reaching, uh, the heating probability should be equal to what? So, H44 should be equal to, H44 should be equal to 1. And also, if you are in state 1, here you can see, if you are in state 1, you can't go back. As you can see in, in the transition diagram, you can't go back to other states. So, that is, you cannot reach state 4. So, in that case, I can write H14 as equal to 0. So, now we are left with 2 and 3. So, we have to find out H24 and H34. So, if you look at H24, here from H2, if you use the first step analysis, the immediate steps that we can reach is uh, state 3 and state 1. So, the State 3, the probability is 1 over 2. State 1, again, the probability is 1 over 2. So, if you use the first step analysis, that I can write 1 over 2 into, if you reach state 3, again, you have to talk about the heating probability, H3, 4 plus 1 over 2. If you reach uh, state 1, heating probability is 1, uh, H1, 4, that is equal to 0. So, here H24 is equal to 1 over 2 times H34. Likewise, if you, if you apply the first step analysis to this one, state 3, and here from state 3, you can go to state 4. So, 1 over 4 times H44. So, H44 is 1. And 1 over 2 times H24. If you look, uh, use the first step analysis. So, by solving this, you can find the probabilities and find the heating probabilities like this. So, in this case, actually, when we find this, when we use this first step analysis, now we observe the transition diagram and first we found, now if you are already in the given state, this probability is equal to 1. And if you cannot reach the given subset, uh, from a given, uh, uh, from another state, that heating probability should be equal to 0. That we found actually using the, uh, by looking at the transition diagram. But there should be a formal method, formal uh, equation to find out this heating probability. So that we'll discuss in the next uh, lecture. By uh, For now, you should be able to find out the heating probabilities using first step analysis and by observing the transition diagram. So, I'll stop from this point. Please go through all the recordings and the, uh, the things that the topics that we have discussed because uh, after completing all these topics, we'll be uh, start. Uh, we'll be starting the question sessions. So, for that, you have to get ready with all the uh, 
uh, theories and you have to go through all the uh, questions that I have discussed so far, then it will be easy for you. Okay, then I'll stop from this point. Thank you very much.